Step nine, we are going to insert wood art, word art. Apologize. My voice was really bad in my last recordings. I apologize. I have seen a couple different students have different selections here. Anyway, if you don't see word art immediately available, pick text, choose word art. It's not specific. Um, if this were my assignment and I were doing it for me, I would have taken all the color off and I would use black. But this is not my assignment and this is a different color. So I would probably have chosen this one. And just type. You don't have to backspace or anything. And just type the chair guy. And the way you make the text vertical rather than horizontal is just with this little guy. It's kind of fun to mess around with. And it is not specific as to which direction it wants it. I believe the standard is to go like this so that it's point pointing. Actually, I'm not sure if there is a standard, to be honest. And then you just move it. Once it in column C. And because it is in, in infringing on what's down here, down below, I would simply click on a text, part of text, hit Control A, it gets it all, and then I would go back to home and I would just click smaller, smaller until it no longer infringes. Like that, maybe I like that. And then I'd move it up a little bit. Great. I don't in general like the way that this form is designed, but again, that's part of the subjective stuff of business. I would have done it differently. But this is what we have, and, um, and everything works. It, it functions in the way that it is supposed to, so that's fine. Now we want to progress down the sheet a little bit. Oops, sorry. I still have that selected, so it was moving. I don't want to do that, so make sure you click out. There you go. Now you can use the arrow keys and just go down. Now, right here we want to put formulas. And the formulas we want to put in are the exact reason why we name cells. I started to show you guys this in the beginning of this semester. And, um, yeah, so I would just put equals, start typing chair, and you'll see chair name right there. So you can just double-click on it because it's very important that you put the exact name or the formula is not going to work right. And then here you want to do equals and their style so if it's capital it needs to be capital that kind of thing now you'll see when I did that I got pine right here and the reason I did is because this has pine in it I didn't clear it from when I was testing before. So if we clear it, it goes to zero, which is what yours should look like. Now we want to unlock the input cells, which is B5 to B12. Those are input cells because that's where we are going to put data. The rest of this form is locked for a reason so that nothing gets changed. So if we select B5 to B12, not price, because that's going to change based on our input. And then go to Format. The book is not clear in its direction, so I will tell you this. If your locked cells looks like this, click it so that it looks like this, so that the cells are not locked, okay? And B13 should be locked, so let's check it. It is locked, correct, great. Now enter the data as directed in the book. So now you should have a form that looks essentially like this. And um, we want to make sure that we protect the documentation, well, all the worksheets. So if you go to File, and you look, oh, see, two are protected, one is not. So we'll go back over here, Order Form, Format, Protect Sheet, Allow Users to 
select unlocked cells. Okay. So now if we go back and check file, we should see that they're all protected or unprotected wouldn't show here. So go ahead and save your file. Save it as what you always do. Make sure you save it with macros. Oh, sorry, this is important. Save as. You have to change the file type. Macro enabled workbook. If you save it as a regular workbook, you will get error messages on down the road. Make sure you choose that and then click save.